And the diaphragm specifically I'm talking about is the fuel pump diaphragm. As you can see in this example, we've got a rubber type diaphragm. Then we've got this type of diaphragm here, which can be black or blue in color, sometimes green. And we call this an acetate diaphragm. And then we've got this diaphragm. It's usually referred to as Teflon because apparently it's made of Teflon fibers. And to be honest, when I was a trainee, I didn't really give much thought to the materials that these diaphragms were made of. I'd just fit the diaphragm. If it fitted the carburetor, then tune the carburetor. But it wasn't long before I started to become inquisitive as to why there was differences in the material. At the time, I did ask some of my mentors and they didn't really have a definitive answer as to why. So I started to do my own research and asking around in the trade and also taking a look at how my machines ran when I put these different types of carburetor diaphragms in them, how they were tuned differently, etc. But anyway, through my own sort of research, if you like, I came up with this information. And just so I'm clear, this is the information based on my opinion and my experience. But I hope there's something here of value for you to take away. So let's take a look at these three diaphragms. OK, so we'll start with this one. It's a, the rubberized one and one that I've unwittingly used quite often in the past. It's always black and it's the most flexible. Apparently, this type is a good choice if there's little or no ethanol in fuels because ethanol can damage this type of diaphragm quite quickly and easily. Because it's flexible, it's a very good pumping diaphragm. It can move quite big volumes of fuel through the carburetor quite efficiently with little impulse from the impulse line. Apparently it can deal with a quite a heavy mix of two stroke fuel to oil, as in let's say a 20 to one mix, something really thick like that. But if just left to sit in the carburetor, these type can go bad a lot quicker than the other types. OK, so next, let's take a look at the shiny, plasticky looking one that's known as acetate. And as I've said, they come in different colours. This one is a blue one and they also can be green. Now, some believe that these can work better in colder climates, so colder temperatures. And apparently when these are used, the carburetors also need more adjustment to get it working just so. They are much more of a weaker pumper. I suppose that's because it's a harder material to move. So when the impulse line tries to move this, it has a harder job. It needs more of an impulse to actually get this diaphragm pumping. They're not so good as the last one I showed, the rubberized one, because they're not as flexible. So if that's the case, then these diaphragms are probably best used with a weaker mix. So the viscosity of the mix isn't so thick. It's thinner, like a 50 to 1 mix, let's say. That's just my opinion. These acetate diaphragms are used largely in things such as weed whackers, weed eaters, line strimmers. I suppose that's because they don't need to be working at a sort of high performance level, if you like, an high performance speed with the amount of fuel that they need to pump in through the carburetor and into the engine. But overall, they resist alcohol in fuels very, very well. In fact, excellent. And their durability is also really, really good. But the amount of fuel they pump through is a lot less than the other diaphragms. OK, so let's now look at the Teflon type diaphragm made of Teflon fibres. Some refer to it as fiberglass. You can see that this one, although it's not the same type of diaphragm as the one we saw earlier, it's off a different type of carburetor. This is the type of material I'm talking about when I refer to the Teflon. Straight away, we can see this diaphragm is much more flexible than the acetate that we've just looked at. Because of its flexibility, it has a better flow volume of fuel through the carburetor to the engine and all round a better diaphragm to the ones we've looked at so far. It survives very well with alcohol. They can pump a heavy mix of fuel and it's really a best all rounder diaphragm. If you can get these, they last really well and they can pump decent volumes of fuel with just moderate impulses from the pulse line. You need to know, though, that 
some of these, depending on where you get them from, do in themselves vary in quality. So you could get a genuine type one from, let's say, Walbro or an aftermarket product. And of course, they won't work quite the same as each other, probably. So make sure you get these from a really good source. But because it's so good and it's so flexible and pumps so well, these can pump too high a volume for certain applications. That's why in carburetor kits, there are variations in diaphragms. So to put these in some carburetors isn't a good idea because it pumps too well. But on the whole, this diaphragm has excellent durability and it's preferred by a lot of people. So just as a quick, very basic example, there's a variety of machinery that this same carburetor can power. And those different types of machinery may well expect different levels of fueling from this carburetor to power them. As well as that, the similar types of this carburetor means that even though the diaphragms within them are the same as each other, if we take a look here, we've got differences in the size of the venturiole or the induction tube. We can see this one will intake more air. So that goes to show the variability of these carburetors in terms of what they actually power. Even though the structure down here is very much the same and it works the same and they require the same shape diaphragm, we can now start to see why we may need a variation of pumping ability of these diaphragms. I'm just bringing an awareness to the concept of the various diaphragms I've mentioned that can be used in the same sort of carburetor. In fact, when I take both these carburetors apart, I can see they've both been using the acetate diaphragm. But as you can see, for this type of carburetor, we not only have the acetate type, we also have the Teflon and the rubberized. And so perhaps if we're using a chainsaw, something very high revving and demanding a lot of fuel, then this type of diaphragm might be absolutely fine. But then when we look at a weed whacker, as we were saying, and the pumping efficiency for this is too much, so we'd use something like an acetate that pumps much slower. And then in light of what I used to use a lot of, which was the rubberized type, way before there was ethanol added to fuels, well, in our area anyway, then this was used a lot. And from what I've gathered doing some research, they do have different resistances to ethanol. Having said that, let's take a look at something I found on Walbro's website. And it states, Walbro uses three different materials for fuel pump diaphragms in our carburetor production. Each diaphragm material can function with fuel containing up to 10% ethanol. Each original equipment manufacturer specifies the pump diaphragm to be used in their product based on various criteria, i.e. performance, price, etc. Walbro includes a variety of these pump diaphragms in our repair kits. As you repair your carburetor, simply replace your existing pump diaphragm with the matching new pump diaphragm included in the Walbro kit. Well, that kind of outlines and strengthens some of the things I've said. The only issue I have is it's all well and good just simply matching the diaphragm that came out of the carburetor with a new one in the kit. But that's providing that the diaphragm that was already in there was right for the environment, was right for that particular machine and right with the ethanol use. If not, then one would just replace it with the same type of diaphragm and probably have the same kind of problems. Having said that, with Walbro stating that all of their diaphragms are resistant to 10% ethanol, then maybe the use of ethanol isn't such a problem at all. Having said that, I'm certain that my diaphragms have been damaged a lot more since we've used ethanol, especially these rubberized ones. I can vouch for that myself to a degree, and a lot of people in the trade have said the same. But this is my experience of this whole diaphragm thing. But what I want to know is what you guys think. Please let me know in the comments below. And in the meantime, I'll be back soon. Thank you for watching. <laughs>